You're listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List Online, and my name is Andrew Mackay-Smith. The interview subject that I've got coming up for you, it's Moana Matrix, and she's from the outfit, I guess it's an eponymously titled outfit, Moana. The reason for the chat is to promote the outfit's debut album, In the Allure. It's out right now, definitely check it out. But here she is, Moana. How's things? Moana. Yeah, I'm good. How you doing? Oh, I'm plugging away. It's my interview night, so I've, uh, you're the last one, which is really cool. I've actually designed it this way because I'm intrigued and I'm really interested in what you're doing. So I've had a, I've had a, a good night so far, and I know your night's just beginning, isn't it, being over there in Perth? Yeah, 7 o'clock. It's still light here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. But, uh, that's... Summer is eminent. Oh, sweet. Yeah, what do, what do you mean? You've been working today? What's the day held for you? The day has held a little bit of work. Um, I work as an early childhood music teacher, so I did a couple uh-huh. of classes Good on you. with some very cute toddlers and I went for a swim and I've been packing for tour actually because my flight is super early tomorrow morning. It is. You're coming over here and I'm going to try to get – I'm on the Gold Coast. I'm going to definitely try to get oh, to the show on Friday night. Um, Hell yeah, that'd be great. You know, so – look, I'm going to kick things off, but my opening statement yeah. is, is a long one, okay? So bear with me here, okay, as I get through it all, okay? All right, I'm here. Okay, so here we go. So in the in the allure, that's the name of your debut album, and I yep. reckon it's really hard to describe what you've done here. Okay, it's part mm-hmm. doom metal, part fuzz rock, part goth sounds. To me, if I could summarise it now, of course I can't play the music on the podcast because I can't get you paid through AMRAP that way. But if I was going to just, this is the bloody thing about podcasting. Someone needs to fix that because I'd love to play the music for people, particularly most yep. of my listenership comes from overseas on the podcast series. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. But it sounds like a cross between Bauhaus and King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. So take that as a compliment because I think both bands are great. But but look, I've got to be up front with you. Um, initially, I didn't like it, but then it grew on mm-hmm. me. Your album grew on me. What yeah. I, what yeah. I really like what you're doing is the mm-hmm. heavy rever- reverb on the voice. It lends itself to that dark and ethereal quality that serves who what you're doing really well. The problem was, and I'll be really specific here, the problem that I thought was I didn't think the riffs by the band, I thought they were too simple Mm -hmm. and I thought the drumming was Mm -hmm. too predictable. But you have a stunning voice and I really want to make that point. Your voice is really distinct and I felt it needed stronger riffs and more technical Mm -hmm. drumming. But I persisted. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. I -hmm. persisted. I gave in and I've been listening to it for about two or three weeks, most nights when I go to sleep. So you've been sending yeah. me to sleep in a good way. But Interesting. and then I've been listening to it actively too with headphones on. And I kept yeah. listening as I say, and it's look, it's definitely an album that I think for the listener out there you need to spend time with. Because at this point in yeah. time I've had it for about a month or so. I think it's killer. I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. Now I Thank hope you. that doesn't sound too negative and I've sort of backed it up by no. you know coming around. But have you got similar feedback from people or or, or is it universally been very positive reception? Because I certainly know you've got a lot of positive feedback about it. Yeah, well, that's really super interesting um, what you have to say. And, I, yeah, um, what else have I, was being said? I mean, yeah, I've had a, like, in terms of, like, constructive criticism, yeah, like some people have mm. felt that maybe the songs aren't fully finished. Um, that's been something someone has said to me. Um, but most of what I've got from people is quite positive. However, I do think people are afraid to tell you exactly what they think. That's the problem, isn't it? And look, I've been doing this a yeah. while now. I've well over, I think about almost 500 interviews at this point. So I tend to be, it's not that <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be direct and, and be cruel or hurt anybody or anything like that. It's no, not I'm about all for that. it. You know, I'm all for it. But I think what, uh, you know, I think you're, you're an amazing singer and you have, I've watched the YouTube clips and the Facebook clips and you have a stunning presence on stage. Um, I'd really Thank like, you. I'm really keen to see where you take this though. I've got to tell you, you know, that mm. I, I'm really keen to see where you go because I think this is, is, this is pretty good what you're doing here now. And I do, I really do genuinely like the album, but I think mm-hmm. you, I, I, I can't wait to see where you grow from here because yeah. I really, and I, and I really hope that from a financial side of things, it's starting to work for you because that's, of course, the key to making these things work. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it bloody is how it is. We can't change the game, you know. You know, never hate yeah. the player, hate the game sort of thing, you know, sort of, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but, for sure, for sure. I mean, yeah, I feel like this is just the start um, in terms of what creative work is going to come next. 
Mm. Um, and I'm also excited for the future. I feel like the al- the first album has been the process of the last however long I've been playing in the band, you know, six, seven years. Mm. Um, this has all been a huge learning curve and I feel like this is just the beginning. So um, the uh, there's a bit in the cultist. The cultist is my favourite song on the album. And okay. I really want to get into some detail here because – there's a bit from one minute onward, so I take it it's the verse. But it's so powerful yep. because you're singing and your own voice is backing you up, you know, with that, whoa, whoa, ah, that bit there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Jesus, yeah. that is powerful. Man, that is just a moment right. that sends my, you know, tingles down my spine and everything. And But I, 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 <laughs> I wish that was utilised more because – yeah, it, cool. it is a feature where you, you track your own voice because the guys can't do that. I mean, you've got a very distinct voice that just cannot be copied. So yeah. is that is that something that you realise when you're in the studio? I mean, what do, what exactly do you mean by doubling up my voice there? Because to me that's just like there's the vocal part that's like the ah, oh, 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 ah, ah, yeah, oh, oh, that's oh, it. And I've done like a harmony on it. But, you're, but you can't do that um, and sing at the same and sing the lead melody at the same time. Do you know what I mean? You can't sing the lead oh, yeah, and then in, Yeah, sure. And then in the background it continues, yes, yeah, to the next verse. Exactly. Is that what you're talking about? Exactly. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. yeah. So do you get the guys yeah. to double up and do that bit live or how does that work when, you, when you're performing? We haven't yet. Um, we've we've incorporated SPD pads, so we do do a few um, vocal layers live Sweet. in that regard. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. Bass player Austin is a great singer in his own band. However, like we haven't really integrated his voice into the set yet. And I think that is because, as you say, it's quite, my voice is quite distinctive. And it's also like for me personally to integrate a male voice in such a feminine vocal sound is a bit like we'd have to work on it, you know, and we just haven't mm. integrated that yet. So at the moment it's the pads and just really bringing more of a, I don't know, vocally, like more of a raw sound live as well. Yeah, you actually, I've got to say, you actually sound like, and again, don't take this as a negative comment at all, but you have such a strong voice, you actually sound better live than what you do on album. And I don't know whether your voice was yeah. captured mm. in its as intense as what it is on the album. Is that feedback mm. that you've got as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, yeah, everyone digs the live show the most. Like that's the feedback I always get. Um, yeah, so absolutely. I think, uh, I think it's, I mean, I don't know if I've heard that many bands that ever sound as good as they do live, you know, like I always prefer a live show myself, um, for bands I really love. I think it's quite hard to capture it recording wise. I mean, I don't know. That's just my experience. God, I'm, I'm a, I've am i been a muser for 25 years or so. I'm, I, I tend to find I'm quite the opposite these days. Bands just don't okay. put in the effort live that they do on album. It ends up sounding like a carbon what I, was, what I used to call it a xerox so a photocopy of what they were doing it's not yeah. the real thing so to speak you know there are great bands out there like living color that just get it because they're great musicians and the like but um not having seen you you perform live and just having to go the by the youtube stuff and the facebook stuff it's very powerful what you're doing um I'd, you. I'd almost Thank even you. i'd almost even suggest once you um I, I'm, I'm also i don't have a problem with backing tracks either a lot of People in this industry hate backing tracks. I play with backing tracks all the time. Mm. The fans love it. The fans get right into it, and that's yeah. what counts. Um, I think it's got to be selective. For me personally, like, I think it's you've got to use it, um, you know, like not you – have, you have to be, like, minimal with how you use it, and then it's, like, really great when it comes in. Like, that's my take on using that kind of stuff because I do prefer a bit of a, like – I prefer a live, raw sound um, on the stage. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it definitely comes across. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, and that was the stuff I've watched is just done on iPhones or Android devices too, man. And that's uh, that's really saying <laughs> something when you can capture the energy on those bloody devices. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yep. For sure. <laughs> so hey, in our tiny little tiny little speaker boxes that come out of phones, yeah. Oh, they're shockers, aren't they? I was at where was I watching? I was watching Wolves in the Throne Room the other night, and um, I was right up the front because I'm a big fan of that band, and. Um, Half of the people around me had their bloody phones out. Name. Oh, it's a killer, killer band name, isn't it? I don't know. When I actually got into them initially because of the band name. It just turned out they were a killer band as well. So I stayed. You know, I stayed for the party. Yeah. <laughs> <You> nah. <know? laughs> you know? Yeah. Cool. 
<laughs> hey, uh, how, how did you how did you find band members then? Because I take it you do you write everything yourself and then and uh, you know give it to people via the cloud or how how does it work that way? Uh, no, that's not how it works for us. Um, there are a bunch of songs that, um, I mean, I would say like most, most of the sort of like instigation of a song is something that I would have worked on by myself, you know, so maybe sometimes I'll have like a verse and a chorus, or I might just have a particular idea or whatever. And then I generally bring it in and then we all jam it out and through the jams, like the kind of, um, the gaps I had in my writing will get filled and played with. And then it's like a process of taking it back and like listening back to what we've done. And then I kind of cut and paste it until and direct the direct everyone in the will, you know, like the kind of vision I have until we reach a final product. Um, but there are songs that like on the album that are more things that I've done a lot more myself. And then there are songs that have been a lot more collaborative where um, like Willow, the guitarist, will come in with a riff and we'll all be vibing it and we'll just um, work a lot more like collaboratively for some songs as well. So it's a bit of a mixed bag over the album. So I take it you're the sort of vocalist that could probably do stuff like what Confidence Man are doing. So so what, why did you choose to go down this route here? Is this just, is this just the vessel, this sort of music that, that you think suits your, your voice and what you're trying to do? Because it's, it's quite heavy at times, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, it's an intriguing thing like my journey with my voice because I don't I don't, yeah, I don't really know how I ended up singing. Yeah, like the heavy music is something that I didn't expect to happen. Mm. Um but it just felt really good to play it live and so now I'm doing it. However, like I actually really love singing soul and I love singing like all kinds of stuff. So mm. I am uh that's why I'm excited about the future of singing because there's so many opportunities and like I just love using my voice in different ways as well. I never want, I never like to get bored of what kind of style I'm playing and what kind of things I'm doing vocally. I need to like change it up, you know. Um, I hope, yeah, so I hope you keep. Good. I hope you keep the band kind of like it is in terms of the sound. But I'd love to see you do some mm. different things, like with soul. To your point, because you do have mm. you have a very distinct voice. You've got like a Ronnie Spector style voice. Does that make sense? And she's like one of my favourite singers of all time. <laughs> so, like when I say no, that, I don't know Ronnie. Oh, you haven't heard of her? You haven't heard of her yet? As in Regina Spector? No, I don't know Regina Spector, not, um, not okay. Ronnie Spector. Okay, what I want you to do is when we finish this call, I want you to go onto YouTube and type in Ronnie Spector and you'll know exactly what I'm saying. She was okay. Phil, Phil Spector's wife, um, you know, the guy who basically invented modern production. Um, okay. And uh, her voice is, uh, you know, she sang, be my, you know, be my, be my baby. She did that. She's that chick. Oh, she's like cool. all time. She's yeah, like, right. she's like, yeah, you, you, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to yeah. see, yeah, what happens next for you. But if you have a listen to her, you'll know what I mean about your voice. It's got the, it's, it's not that they're okay, the same, cool. but it's a similar timbre. You know, yeah. like cool. you know when she's when you sing, I know it's you. When she sings, I know it's her. You know, you're not trying yeah. to sound like anybody else. And I love the fact that you've got that Oz accent coming through because a lot of singers like the the chick Janet Planet from uh, Confidence Man. She's done that whole American mm. accent. I thought you don't need to do that because it doesn't matter anymore. Mm. No, we don't need to pretend to be. Yeah, Americans. for sure. I remember I worked with someone who, um, back in my like early, I must have been about nineteen, and I was recording this song with a guy who'd written a song, and he wanted me to sing in an American accent. I was just like, "Fuck off! <laughs> no way! Like, that's yeah, not me, you. you know." Yeah, no, good on you. And why would you? Um, well, we just didn't have an appreciation for what you've got naturally, you know. So, so how did you develop that? Were you in yeah, choirs? Ameri Americanizing everything is Americanizing everything is just ridiculous. Like, there's no. Like, why would we want to do that? But look, anyway, sorry. Your next no, question. I, oh, no, just to round that point out. Look, I'm 41. I came up in the 90s, and let me tell you, I was in plenty of bands with dickheads who wanted to sound like Eddie Vedder or Kurt Cobain, and put on that rah 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 voice, and it was just so painful to listen to them put on that voice was like just sing normally whatever your accent is just sing normally you don't need to do that you know and yeah, sure. it was yeah. it was yeah it was one of those things and i forgot what my next question was going to be sorry what was i going to say it was <laughs> it was a good one too it flew away it was it was right oh, here and it went, flew away somewhere what was i going to say oh that's it yeah how, how did you how did you did, when you, you were singing like when you were starting out singing sorry were you in choirs mm -hmm. and school and that sort of thing or how did you really get into it and really develop the singing style you've got? Um, hmm, I just have always been singing. I don't, 
remember a time I was never not singing. And I did music in school, like vocal music, like, you know, studied singing, but I just could never wrap my head around theory, to be honest. Like at that age, it was, wasn't something I wanted to do in a classroom. And so, I don't know, like, and then through my teenage years, I don't know, like I grew up with a lot of, like my dad listened to a lot of old school blues and then my mum listened to a lot of like, you know, like classic 60s, 70s rock and roll. And also like I grew up in a surfy sort of town. And so a lot of the sounds around me were always like very soulful and very, um, I don't know, like, yeah, soulful and chill and groovy. Hmm. And then when I moved to the city, so I grew up in the country, when I moved to the city, that's when I started to get into rock and into like this big operatic sounds and just expand into that. And so I don't know, it's been like a, a, it's all like a mesh of all those things, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think as well same. as like my dad, my dad's Maori, like he's from New Zealand and like I feel like when I sing there's a lot of like spirit that's coming through my voice that isn't just me, you know. Aha, uh-huh, there you go. Radio, do you speak uh, any te reo at all? No, not really. Like I'm learning. It's a process through my life to like to learn. To discover, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot like that, yeah. Yeah, I didn't grow up in Australia, so I was kind of disconnected from from the culture there. But it, I feel it's super strong. Oh, you can you can feel it through your music. You got that spiritual. I mean, it's a cliche. Sorry for saying it, but yeah, it's definitely there. That spiritual side of your music. It. I don't know. It's, as a musician, it's something intangible, isn't it? You know, and and people mm-hmm. who have a deep connection to culture, whether it be through heritage like yourself or you know something that they've rediscovered it definitely comes through in the music and i can definitely hear it with your stuff it's um i don't know it's just something you listen to once or twice and you go i want to keep listening to this it's affecting mm. me at a spiritual level and that's why stuff a lot, a lot of the, that stuff that's made for radio you know those you know like taylor mm. swift stuff that's got like 20 songwriters working on stuff with an mm-hmm. ai sort of thing that's why that stuff will never be around it won't be around in 50 years time because it's not music for the soul it's not written from the soul you know, yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not cheating on Taylor Reid that she's got a right to make a career, but I'm just talking about why your music will connect with people uh, on, the, yeah. on that basis. You know, and uh, so and and the other thing too is the um, the artwork. Can you tell me about the artwork that's associated with the album as well? Because that's it's a picture of you on the front cover. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Is that yourself on the front cover there? It is me. Yeah, it's based on me. I mean, it's it's an artwork, so it's an interpretation always, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just looking at it right now. So in the allure for me is like within, it's like within the magic, within the mystique, within the seduction. Mm -hmm. And the dark figure is, and like the world within that dark figure's cloak is where I'm inhabiting. And within there, as you can see, there's like the multiple limbs and there's, like Mm -hmm. the eyes on the trees and there's this sense of like magic in nature and spirit and and shadow and underworld and unconscious and then outside of that it's like everything's a little bit blurry and Mm -hmm. and also like the moon is within within that element so it's like the feminine element and the nightly element Cool, yeah. It actually reminds me a, a, a lot of what Cella Darling, you know, Anna Murphy, what she was doing with some of her stuff. Um, in the, you've got the, I'm going to have to look into all these artists you're telling me. Yeah, oh, look, you'd, you'd love Anna. She's a lovely, lovely girl too. You know, she's uh, Irish, but I think I think half Irish, half Swiss. But Cella Darling are a killer band. She used to be the singer in Elviti, if you've heard of them, like a Celtic metal okay. band. Um but uh, Interesting. yeah, I love triangles. You see, so what I didn't know that was a cloaked figure. Actually, I thought it was a triangle <laughs> that uh, okay. you, you were right. housed by. And I love triangles. You know, right back to pyramids and stuff. And I get intrigued by sure. them. So that that was really the angle there was to find out exactly why it included the triangle on there. But now I know it's a person. You know, uh, well, or, yeah. or a I mean, I mean, of course, yeah. I love the triangle too. And I think, like, I think that's wicked. I think like there's all sacred geometry and everything. Is indeed, yeah, yeah, and and look, you're from out west, and the thing about Perth is, I, I've long felt for many years now, it's where um, you shouldn't use, usually use these terms, but I will. Some of the best music in Australia is coming out of at the moment, and mm-hmm. there's something in the water over there for the last five years or so. You know, there's uh, ha- literally half of the Australian artists that I, I interview are from Perth, and that's from volume yeah, of right. music released. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. 
there's just yeah. a killer scene over there. It's not like as though there's a lot of places for you to play either. So, so have you got a, have you got mm-hmm. an opinion on why music from Perth? And and I know you, I'm not asking to comment necessarily on my opinion, but do you feel music from Perth is very strong at the moment compared to the rest of Australia? Uh I mean, yeah. I don't honestly like. I'm a bit of a hermit. Like I'm not. I'm not super up with what else is happening outside of like my little my little world of music. Um. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, yeah, Perth, like when you go out to gigs here, like there is a really high, high like quality of music and a lot of people that travel here from other places, you know, like they, they seem to think that Perth, you know, like it's compared to Melbourne, I guess, where there's like over east, there's a whole lot of bands and you have to go to a, if you go to a gig, you're not guaranteed to see a really, like a good show. You just, you, you know, it's a bit of a gamble, it seems. Whereas here, I don't know, there's a, there's more high caliber. I don't know. I'd agree with that. Yeah. I'd, I think Brisbane, we here, we have, I'm from the Gold Coast, but Brisbane's near enough by Gold mm. Coast. I think there's like two venues. You're playing at one and there's Vinny's Dive. That's the other one. I think there's only two. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Right. The poor old Sunny Coast where I spent a lot of time as well, Sunshine Coast, there's there's one venue which is Soul Bar. And met myself yeah. and Dave Dean, we were talking about opening a venue at Nambour there, but I didn't want to lose my house, to be honest with you, trying to start a venue up. It's, yeah, it's, it's a yeah. very difficult industry to sort of get into. But I, I, I'm really glad you said that about Perth because I feel that way about it, which is that because of the, the, the limited venues, if you like, or limited opportunities for play, the bands that do get an opportunity to play are really bloody good because mm. that's what I'm mm. hearing. Whereas, and, I, and yeah. I'm not, not saying that bands from Sydney, Brisbane or Melbourne aren't as good necessarily. I'm just talking about the music that sounds most satisfying to my ears from an Australian sure. perspective is coming out of Perth at the moment. And, and I've got to say, yeah. all of the artists that have spoken to Perth too are just fantastic. You know, yeah. and just yeah. really easy to talk to. Um, you know, I can, I can offer a pin, an opinion like I did at the beginning there, and you don't get offended. You're willing to go on that journey yeah. with me, and I really appreciate that because I think sometimes it's a big Perth is a city. I get that, but it's not a big city like Sydney or Melbourne is. And I think For sure, yeah, the competitive natures of big city lends itself to people getting really offended because they want their stuff to be better than everybody else's, but. Really, I'm just trying to mm-hmm. offer feedback to help. Honestly, that's I'm just a music yeah. fan at the end of the day. I'm not. I mean, I'm a journalist. I'm you know I'm working for the Bulletin and stuff too. But um, I, um, I I just lo- I really want to see great Australian music thrive. You know. Yeah. So And I just see so much of that happen in Perth. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely a community vibe when you go out. Um, yeah, it feels like you're you're with family all the time in a funny way. Like you know, it's a small community. Um, and I don't know if you've seen, but Nick or Nick Albrook from Pond a few years back, he wrote a really great article about why he believes that Perth is creating such great art. And the gist of it really was just like the isolation is what creates the great art. Um, because we're in our own little bubble here. We kind of like, I don't know, it's almost like we need, we don't have other things to keep us distracted. We're just focusing on our art. Because things aren't open late at night, yeah. and you know we don't we can't go on just a, a weekend trip to Sydney or whatever. So I think that's a big part of it too. Poor old Sydney, mate. The music scene there is just horrible. Um, I've, I've only I've I've spoken to less bands. If I've spoken to if I've done almost five hundred interviews, and if about one hundred and fifty of them are Australian artists, I reckon I've spoken to less than twenty artists from Sydney. You know that and. Yeah just the lockout laws and it's such a tough place to live for people because people overseas, half of my audience comes from the States and, you know, and then the another um, 25% again comes from, you know, blend of Europe and South America and wherever else. Um, mm. They think Sydney's like this big beach place. It's a really nice place, but it's a mm. fucking awful place. Excuse my language. <laughs> um, it, it truly is. And it's a place that it's so competitive. There's almost 6 million people in there these days. Um, yeah. you really have to have a high paying executive salary job to thrive and survive and if you're yeah. a musician I'll, I'll go down there for gigs and man I just I, I, I like talking to the Sydney siders believe me I do there's some really cool people there but um, I just they're just the shows aren't well attended these are serious shows as well like when yeah. Trepanering's Richland came down there wasn't heaps of people there for him and, and yeah. there was heaps of really good bands on that. But I spoke to heaps of people there, man. And a lot of people were there like me. I go to gigs by myself because I've got a wife and kids. And, 
mm-hmm. you know, there's no way I'm bringing the kids along, of course, but the wife likes Beyonce and all that R&B shit, so I don't get into any of that. I just leave her with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and she doesn't get into yeah. my... I can't think why she wouldn't get into my dark do- doom and goth and death and black metal and all the rest of it, <laughs> <laughs> if she likes that stuff. But I You're go to... Yeah, well, yin yang, yeah, totally. Oh, look, I, my music is my own personal thing. I've never sort of—I'm a musician too, as I've mentioned, but but I've always sort of gotten into it just for me, and I don't really care about whoever else is getting into it. I just love getting into music by myself, sort of thing. It's my own little personal, my only personal pursuit in this world, I suppose. But but the point is, is that I go to gigs in Sydney, and I think that there's a lot of people like me down there, and yeah, and they're 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 sort of going to gigs by themselves, and they're sort of I wouldn't say isolated, but yeah, there's not yeah. that not that sense of community like there is, say, in Brisbane, because I'm part of the Brisbane music community, and we all get along famously. Some of my best friends yeah. are musicians, you know, but I'm just not sensing yeah. that in Sydney, and I think that's a shame, because you know some of the yeah. best bands in in Australia's history, in excess. Well, I know they originally came from Perth, but you know they made their name in Sydney. You know, in excess, yeah. ACDC, Midnight Oil. I mean, all these bands are Sydney bands. But mm. but yeah. what name the last it's Sydney band? Something. Yeah, yeah, name the last band that came from Sydney that was really impactful. I, I can't. I, honestly, I'm struggling. I, I'm really, truly struggling. And that's not me trying to be an edgelord. That's just, you know, but when I think of Perth, there's, there's you guys, there's so many killer bands coming out of there that demand attention. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, rant finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm listening. I mean, we're playing in Sydney on our little tour happening this weekend. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what that's like. Whereabouts are you playing down there? Frankie's Pizza. Well, that's a good venue, that one there. You'll get heaps of people at that one there for you. Yeah, Yeah, and it's their seventh birthday, so we're on a really good lineup as it is. So. Oh, shit. Are you, are you doing um, the Venom Inc. show? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, look, if you speak to Tony, I mean, yeah, don't. But he's, look, I know those guys, and they are good guys. <laughs> yeah, cool. You know. Um, I look, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to meet him. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're really cool guys. Let me tell you, they. Uh, I, I had, I've had a couple of conversations. When I say I know them, I've had conversations like this. Okay, but I feel like I know them, and yeah, I've been so impressed with them as human beings because, because of my age, I got right into Venom as a kid, and mm-hmm. to finally meet the guys, at least like we're doing now, they're just top guys, really nice guys, and uh, just genuine and and. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think you'll I think you'll have a killer time with them. That's a killer bill, by the way. I was hoping that they were going to come up here because that's what I was waiting for to see if yeah. they were going to announce bringing it up here as opposed to yeah, them but they're down. not. Well, I, d- I don't get it. Why are they only flying to, to Sydney for one show? Like, wouldn't you? I mean, we're a long <laughs> way to travel for one bloody show, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, maybe there's some. Maybe Frankie's wanted some exclusivity about their show. Well, they've got it. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. <laughs> they've yeah. got it. So, uh, but no, that'll be a kill. That's God, man. With you guys on with them, man. Oh, I'm really. Oh man, I'm yeah. thinking seriously about going down there for that with you, you two together like that. Who else is yeah, on the bill know. with that one? Um, there's a band called the Cavemen from New Zealand. Yeah. And two local Sydney bands, Fangs and Eight Ball Junkies. Where, where are you? You're the main support, though, aren't you? You'd have to be, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh man, that you'll have so much fun. Yeah, you'll have yeah, so much fun with that show. Yeah. I mean, when they play black it's metal or so, have you? Do you know Venom's music very well? No, I don't. You got to check this stuff out seriously. <laughs> like, like I mean, they the inventors Everyone of black says I metal, should, but I kind of just want to see it. <laughs> well, <laughs> they spectate. they invented black metal, right? Like they're the guys. Um, yeah, I heard. You know, like, and but there's such they're so you know they're 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 Midlands. UK guys, so they're really down to earth, um, mm. and uh, you know their fearsome reputation they do not live up to at all because they're such nice guys. So <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you're going to have such a yeah. good time with them. Yeah, yeah, you know. I'm keen. I'm super keen, and that's the last tour of our, uh, the last show of our tour. So it'll be a nice one to finish on. Cool. All right. Well, look, I'll wrap things up, but before I do, uh, from the listener's perspective, where can they find your music? Is it is it Bandcamp, Facebook, and all of those usual places? It sure is. Yeah. Um, the Bandcamp's like Moana Moana dot Bandcamp dot com, and um, yeah, Facebook it's Moana Music. Just look out for Disney. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that because my I've got I've got two girls, four and six, and um, I, think when I typed in, I thought. 
Is that it? You know, they must it, yeah, yeah. It's, but of course, you know, it's obvious that which one's who. Put it that way. So there you go. It's obvious to <laughs> just, for the distinction there. But uh, but look, congratulations on on forging a sound that few have done. Um, and yes. you know what? I just look forward to seeing what you guys, what you in particular, do in the future, because I think that you've got a very long, very prosperous musically and hopefully financially speaking career ahead of you. Thank you so much. That means a lot. You know, so good luck with it. And look what I'll do from here. If you're comfortable with everything we've spoken about, I certainly am. I just put everything up online and I, I'll just mm-hmm. put everything up on my podcast episode, literally from go to end. And um, if you're comfortable with that, I'll just put it up on Facebook. Well, I've got a, I'm going to Wooshka, the News Limited platform, but um, yeah. it goes on there first. But then I'll just tag you in on, on Facebook if that's cool. And if you want to share it, share away. Yeah, yeah. It sounds perfect. Cool. All right. Well, good luck with everything, and I'll, I'll do if I if I can get a, a night off from the kids, I'll try and get down there on Friday night. Yeah, for sure. You should. That would be great. No worries. Yeah, and thanks so much for um the great chat. Likewise. No worries. All right. Well, good luck right. again. Cheers. Thanks, Andrew. Bye. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. You've been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A List Online, and my name is Andrew Mackay Smith. That interview subject was Moana Matrix from the eponymously titled outfit Moana. Thank you so much for listening.